I'm sure you read the title that it's called Advocacy. And I know that I've done multiple videos on advocacy, but there was a situation last night, not from myself, but someone else. I won't mention any names because that's their thing to do. However, she was having symptoms of aortic dissection. The symptoms started, I'm thinking about a week ago, got progressively worse. So finally she goes to the ER and she's not in West Virginia. Um, surprise because apparently West Virginia isn't the only terrible place. So, um, she goes to the ER, they give, she tells them, you know, I have chest pain, back pain, upper abdominal pain. Um, it's kind of hard to breathe and I have Marfan syndrome. So they do an EKG standard. They do that pretty much for anyone. Um, a urinalysis. I'm thinking maybe because you're complaining of pain and they're wanting to check for something along those lines. However, they said, oh, I think you may have a UTI. <laughs> um, then they got blood work, which tests for a lot of things, but one of those being cardiac enzymes, i.e. you're having chest pain. So the only thing that I can possibly think chest pain is correlated with is a heart attack. Okay. Cardiac enzymes come back clean. Okay, well, you haven't had a heart attack in the last, like, 24 hours, so you're good. You can go home. So, she tells me this after. Of course, I go, you know, on a rampage. Um, finally convince her to go back, and that didn't help. So, this, this specific person um, is young, so she hasn't had a whole, whole lot of experience advocating for herself and we all know that it's not easy and it's very exhausting and sometimes you just have to be a flat-out bitch you just do like I'm sorry but you do um so the second time they do more blood work they do a chest x-ray which again still would not show a dissection um and maybe another EKG or something like that Anyways, so she, I told her, I said, make sure you say, I have Marfan syndrome, I'm having symptoms of a dissection, and I need a CT. So she did. I even sent her a picture of the cards that um, are from the foundation that say that. I even made a little video, like, here, if you can get them to watch this, I, I, I'm explaining it, you know. So she tells them all of this, and they said, no, I don't think you need that. You only need that in really serious situations. And, you know, your heart is clear. There's nothing wrong with your heart. Because the cardiac enzymes were good. Cool. Yeah, because obviously that's the only thing that can happen with your heart. Um, so, anyways, it, it's... I'm hoping that she will go to a different ER today because, I mean, the symptoms have been going on for quite a while. So, you know, it's, I shouldn't say it isn't, it most likely isn't dissection, but that does not mean that it's not something else, something very serious or just even heartburn because you know what? They didn't even, um, rule out heartburn or gallstones or, Hey, you know, here's a GI cocktail. See if you if you drink this, if um, your symptoms get better. Because we, we do know that um, reflux isn't always that burning that you get right here and it comes up in the back of your throat and things like that. That's not, that's not always the case. Sometimes you get reflux or indigestion or gallstones or something like that and it feels like you're dying. Um, there's a lot of medicines that you can take for that, but if you don't know what it is, you don't know what to take. And if it's that bad, likely Tums don't work. Okay. So it's, it's not uncommon to have to go thinking you're dying and you have some type of GI issue, but they didn't rule that out either. Okay. You probably have a UTI. So she sends me a picture of one of her discharge papers. And not only did they not rule it out, but they also have it in the paperwork that 
it's it could be something more serious and to come back if it gets worse and she needed to go see her cardiologist and if he determined that she needed more testing she could get more testing you can do a CT in a matter of 15 to 20 minutes and even even aside from like time that's making money for your hospital like isn't that what doctors are all about right so there's just so many things wrong with this uh, situation but if if she was actively dissecting these doctors literally they they are completely uneducated on marfans and that is completely evident um they're ignorant on the topic you know sometimes that's because they're older and when they were in medical school there was about a paragraph in the medical book and that's all they learned they're supposed to do continuing education but with something that rare a lot of times that doesn't happen okay uh, i even told her to get the information of the doctors or at least the the um hospital and write them or call them or something or i would do it you know or contact the foundation and they can send them information because honestly when this situation occurs and the the doctors are not aware or quite frankly they don't listen they could kill their patients like it's not it wouldn't be the first time that that would happen because they just don't know so, yeah, it is very, very hard to be your own advocate. It's very, very exhausting. I'm actually going through a process right now with my insurance. I'll uh, update you once I get some things straightened out. However, it's exhausting. It really is. Like when I was in the hospital with sepsis, I had to be my own advocate. And quite literally, I could have died because they just kept telling me I was fine and I didn't have... An infection even though my blood work came back septic so you know advocacy can be something along the lines of hey I need a CT because I think I'm dissecting hey I need you to do this because hey I need this appointment because and the fact that doctors don't listen that's not something new I mean sadly it's just not um, but like I said sometimes you just have to be a bitch a lot of times, if you take your medical records, your binder, your information from the foundation, it helps. Um, not necessarily because they believe you, but because you came prepared. And they think, oh, well, you know, if she's done this much, then maybe there's something to it. A lot of times that doesn't work either, but there's a better chance. And especially if you've had a history, you know, you've gone X amount of times and they found different things each time. Like one time they find costochondritis, another time they find gallstones. Um, okay, so if it's not, if you do do a CT and it's not that, then hey, maybe you can check for these two things because they are both extremely painful and you don't know that I have those either. But it's cool if I go home and you know, just go to my cardiologist when I get a chance. I think in, I think her appointment's in May or something like that. Um, I told her, I said, I wouldn't suggest it because you're going to have a crap ton of comments and uh, advice and et cetera. But if you were to post this situation or story on any of the big groups or even this group, to be honest, people would be going wild. Like you need to do this, you need to do that, you have to do this, they should have done this. And I've told her all of this. That's not something she doesn't know at this point, okay? But it's hard. And if you're young, especially, and you've not gotten an opportunity to, let's say, flex your advocacy muscles, if for lack of a better term, it's hard. It is very hard. And the younger you are, the less they listen because... <laughs> Duh, I went to medical school and what are you, like 20, even 30? I mean, it doesn't really matter because it's rare and I have it. So inevitably, I know more about it than you do, especially something that you read a paragraph on. So, you know, you don't have to take my word for it, but you do have to listen. 
Like, that is part of your job. <laughs> um, so anyways, if you've gotten anything out of this video, you have to be your own advocate. You have to get your own medical records. You have to tell them what you need. You have to tell them what you're feeling. I mean, you just do. It's sad that you have to do that much work to get appropriate care. But it's, you know, it's the sad truth. So if you need any help learning how to be your own advocate, please let me know. Um, I don't know everything, obviously, but I have been in several situations in which I had to be my own advocate and I had to learn on the fly or I had to, like I said, be a bitch or I had to bring in things or I've been in several situations. Okay. So I do have many different um, suggestions. I can help you build a binder, you know, whatever you need. My point is I try to use my experiences to help you. I don't get on here to complain and gripe and poor pitiful me. I get on here because I've been through it. So let me make yours a little bit easier because I can. Okay. So if you have any comments, questions, leave them below in the comments. Um, and yeah, just be thinking of this person because the struggle is not over yet. Um, hopefully it's not anything, you know, dire, but it's not over yet. So thanks for listening and I'll talk to you guys later.